It's funny, I'm willing to at an undergrad level, you kind of feel that it, that, it shouldn't, that it should cover more issues. Because it's pretty hard to come back and infill a person's other background if it isn't the way you thought it should be, unless you, again, have that all-purpose studio that everybody went to that really is, you know, does everything for everyone, which is another you know, whole thing. In conclusion? I, I think so. Uh, you want to conclude? I wonder. Or you want you want me to conclude? Is that what well, you I wonder what, what would be next. Well, my feeling is that I, I, I really think that rather than talk about it, I, I would like, I think every faculty member should really try to define the issues that, that they feel is important and that they're trying to accomplish in their own studio. Then, and also, I think each of us should really come to grips with how we feel about the master's program in a, in a definitive way. And I think that's true of those students who are going to be part of the curriculum group, how you feel about it, if you can you know, weed anything out of all of this. And then uh, try to def you know, get down to where we can really uh, establish, yes, and in general, we agree to these factors, and this is what we can come, come to agreement on. If we can't come to an agreement on, then maybe we have a a multi-level program. I don't know. But I, I think today we've thrown out issues, which is fine. And I think everybody sort of, you've heard everybody, where they come from, where they, what they believe, what they think. Now I think if we try to, each of us, go back and write them down, that would be helpful. And then... When is this going to be? Well, what do we need? A week to do that? A week from, yeah, we're gonna talk about a week from today, we try to define those issues very strongly. And, uh, and hearing it all. And this, this includes also, now we only talk studio so far, but I mean how the seminars are interrelated and what they do is, is just as important too in, in terms of how, how those, can be, those can be structured. I, I don't know. You know, I think that's about as good as we can do out of this meeting. So that'd be next month then? Let's just run it on a week, weekly basis. Now we should by, you know, hopefully by the end of that period, we've got to get down to what I would say is, well, we don't have to, but if we, uh, hopefully we could get down to the point where we could start, you know, defining the program and those issues and then uh, be, have most of this material written by about the middle of November at the latest, because we have to get that much together. There are some other parts that will have to be handled, and also the format has to be handled. The Joe Montoya did come tonight to make a, a grad presentation. He missed the meeting. He got the wrong date the other night. So there's a the gentleman who was making that point before. So if the faculty could stay about another 15, 20 minutes for, for Joe, because he, he sat around an hour waiting for us to talk through this issue. But it, was, but it is relevant to what you're doing. So do you want to? Right now. Do you have it in? You have, I have a yeah, two-page yeah. two page letter. You know, since you mentioned that there was a certain sort of criteria there, what was the name of this? Oh, that came out of the last meeting. Okay. So. I have a some material that they've been working on.
all the old students hang back and all the new ones come in, I guess. <laughs> so. Okay, once again, I'd like to welcome you back to SciArc. Uh, this is the beginning of our sixth year and the first year of our starting as an accredited school. Uh, I was a little bit worried, I think, as we went into this year that we'd be a little complacent and tend to play down rather than keep up the energy that has really existed through our five years uh, since we began. But I think, as I look at this year, I think it'll be probably one of our more exciting years. Uh, first of all, uh, we've expanded our staff uh, by quite a few. I think we have about 11, 12, 13 new faculty. And uh, second of all, we're uh, in the process of acquiring some new land up in Topanga, which I think will uh, generate a lot of excitement as we look at experimental projects up in that area and possibly an eventual research center. And uh, those of you who are going to be in the first year studio will probably be involved quite a bit up in that area as well. The independents and many of the other studios will be doing projects related to uh, the new land. Can we, is it possible to pull in a little tighter? It would really be probably better and then you can hear what's going on. Normally on the first day, what we, what we try to do here, for, for those of you who are new especially, is to give you some sense of orientation, what goes on here, how we operate, meet the new faculty, get a sense of what the seminars are going to be, um, et cetera. And so uh, this morning, first of all, I would like to introduce all of the studio faculty to you so that you'll have some sense of who you will be seeing and who you will be meeting with this afternoon when we break down for studios. Uh, the way the schedule is going to work this morning is we will spend about an hour probably in introductions of uh, studios and seminars. Uh, we will then break for about a half hour at which time Bill Simonian, Bill do you want to raise your hand over there, uh, will be available, Bill's back here, to talk to the new students who have questions. Uh, most of you I think in your uh, when you were being interviewed and when you came to school, we're told approximately what you should be taking in your first year. We also, you've probably been sent information on what you should be taking, and if you know the catalog at all, it, it's fairly explicit. But if you have questions, Bill will be there to answer them, and uh, I will also be available if you have questions of me. Uh, then from about 11 to 11.30, We'll, the, the people who have seminars on Wednesday morning, so we don't lose this morning altogether, uh, will meet with those people who are going to be in those seminars. So as we go through this, I'll, I'll be more explicit on which seminars we'll be meeting this morning. Uh, the other seminars will meet on the regular times, either Friday or next Monday or in the evenings as they are scheduled. At 11.30 then, uh, some of, uh, I guess, both Ed Levine and uh, Jerry Compton will be showing a slide presentation of sort of the birth and growth of SciArc. Uh, and that'll be 11.30, and it's going to be in this main space, right, Ed? And then we'll break for lunch until 1, and at 1 o'clock there will be then a, another slide presentation uh, primarily uh, related to ASC activities, right? It's the student chapter activities. And at 1.30 then the studios will uh, begin and they will go as long as, you know, we will go today. Some will go probably all afternoon. Some may go for an hour or two depending upon um, the studio you're in. Okay, let me first then start out by introducing the studio faculty. And I, from where I am, I'm not picking everybody up. So I hope they're here. Uh, and and those of you who are particularly in the front, why, it would really help in a way if all of you had kind of come forward, if the studio faculty had come forward, because I think most of the new students are up front and they, they're not going to see you as you raise your hand and then disappear. So would, would the faculty come forward so that they'll get a chance to studio faculty first and then we'll get the seminars later? Okay, go over here. Morning, Tony. Uh, 
Okay, our, our first year studio, ARC-1, um, we have four faculty members, and I'll start first with Adi Lati over here, and Glenn Small, who will also be working with the independents. They've been with us now ever since we started. Uh, this year we're adding two new faculty, Tony Gwilliam, and is David Gray here? Yeah, and David Gray over here in the plaid shirt. Okay, uh, that's all for all, all of you who are going to be in the, the ARC 1A studio or 1B studio, those are the first year students. Okay, the second year faculty, uh, is Terry here? I don't, Terry Glassman? Oh, <laughs> you're too close to me. Okay, and Phyllis Berkby who has joined our faculty this year, and then Bill Simonian who will be taking the 2B students who you met before. Over there. Okay, third arc three studio uh, will be Jim Stafford, the white shirt, and a new member of our faculty, Howard Lathrop. And uh, the arc four faculty are Roland Coat and myself. And the arc five faculty, both who are joining us this year, are Alberto Bertoli and Tony Lumsden. Now, the, the graduate ARC-1 studio faculty are uh, Mike Rotundi. Is Mike here? Yeah, okay. Mike's standing in the back still. And a new faculty member, Dan Heron. Where's Dan? You're back there, too. So both, they're both in the back. And the grad ARC-2 is Eric Moss. Is Eric here? I am right there, too. So all the grads are down the middle. Okay. And then... Uh, at this point, then, I would like to introduce Mike Black, who heads up the Community Design Studio, and I think Michael would like to give uh, some background on, on the uh, Community Design Studio. Ina Dubinoff, who's here, too, has always worked with the studio. This semester is not working with it, and Mike will be heading it up. Mike, do you want to start out the discussion this morning on what's going on? Well, the Community Design Studio is uh, entering its third year here, and uh, among our accomplishments, we finally did finish our Rincon research project, which is published, and uh, the playground structure at the Ocean Park School is being constructed. Some of the students are still working on it. And for next year, we, well, there's a blurb that's available, and so I won't spend a lot of time telling you about it, except um, we're interested in making it really a vital learning experience, making it enjoyable and creative and serving the community as well. Uh, the projects available so far are the second year of Rincon, the first year of the Rincon Reservation Project was research, and the second year is developing plans and programs that they can utilize. And this is part of a HUD 701 planning program. The other projects that are available are um, for the community of Rolling Hills, and they're really interested in having a music pavilion, and they're really interested in having us help them to come up with design ideas and to communicate with the community um, to encourage the, the project. Uh, also, they want us to investigate um, <coughs> rehabilitating the, some existing old commercial um, structures. We also get a variety of um, work suggested by the Community Design Center, and we have a play structure still to design for the Ocean Park uh, Church. Uh, it's called, um, what is it called? <laughs> it's the uh, playground um, there. and. So there's going to be projects coming in all the time. And it's basically um, a group experience, except there's going to be individuals bringing in thesis and other projects. And as long as they're community oriented, then we're interested in, in bringing them into the studio. And we'll be meeting at 1 o'clock and read the blurb. And uh, we'll talk about it then, if any of you are interested in it. Okay, thank you. Now I'd like to really 
get into the seminars, which uh, most all the seminar profs will uh, give you a short description of what's going to, what they're going to be doing in their seminars. This gives you a chance to have some sense of what uh, you have to choose from in those areas. Before I do that, however, I'd like to just make a couple of comments just so there won't be some questions on these uh, in these areas. First of all, <clears throat> uh, we've introduced mechanical systems this year. We've always had mechanical systems of sorts, although we've dealt with it primarily as low impact technology and lighting and acoustics, et cetera. But uh, this year, we this course, mechanical systems is also one of the uh, environmental control systems that can be taken as fulfilling that requirement. Uh, in the humanities areas for the electives for the fourth year or fifth year, uh, either the art history, which is given in the spring, or the music history that's being given this fall, fulfill that requirement. Um, in the fifth year, the, the two, decision making and conscious design, were really a part of the studio last year, and these are not going to be given probably again, and they are not requirements for the fifth year people, so I, I think you should just be aware of that. Okay, then um, all of you, I think, have a list of the seminars. I'll try to follow it generally as, as the seminars occur. There are a few people uh, who would like to make their announcements and, and leave because of business problems, and so I will try to put them a little bit ahead and they'll be a somewhat out of order. Um, I would like then really to start with Henry Katzenstein, uh, who teaches physical principles of architecture. Uh, Henry will uh, discuss what, what is taught in that, in that seminar. Uh, we primarily are trying to introduce the uh, uh, concept of quantitative, uh, quantitative thinking to uh, students who are uh, uh, beginning their studies and may have uh, had only a cursory exposure to, uh, to uh, mathematics and physics uh, and uh, who will certainly need these areas reinforced for uh, uh, advanced structures and environmental control systems and so forth. It's uh, uh, interspersed with uh, a lot of uh, of uh, thinking about uh, what is going on in real structures and uh, and in the real world and in the past we've uh, made at least uh, a one site visit to a building under construction to uh, sort of see how these uh, how these principles exhibit themselves in uh, in in the real world. I, I think that that's been very valuable, and I hope we'll we can turn up some good buildings to uh, uh, to look at uh, uh, in order to expand that because it uh, seems to turn everybody on and raise a lot of lot of questions, uh, uh, which we can work on. As far as texts are concerned, I prefer not to work with the text because uh, uh, we're trying to get out of the uh, usual physics mathematics mold of you know this is the formula where you figure that and this is the formula where you figure something else uh, there'll be enough of that uh, unfortunately in the in in advanced uh, uh, work but instead to uh, to see if uh, if uh, we can puzzle out the uh, the mathematics from the uh, uh, principles of what's what's going on. A uh, useful uh, thing to buy if you don't have one is a copy of Parker, which is, uh, I think it's called Simplified Calculations for Architects and Engineers or something like that. If you go to uh, uh, Hennessy and Ingalls and ask for Parker, they'll know exactly what you what you mean. And uh, it's, a, it's a book which will stand you in good stead through the rest of your professional career when you have to look up and see what uh, 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 is the standard way of, uh, of calculating this, that, or the other. Uh, it's called uh, Simplified Calculations for Architects and Engineers, and it's by Parker. I don't know his first name, but everyone knows what Parker is. It's, uh, <laughs> pardon? Harry. Oh, Harry. <laughs> uh, one of the things I'd like to ask, which sounds a little bit, a uh, little bit carping, and that is that uh, eight o'clock is a terrible hour for everyone. But uh, 
Uh, in the past, when we've met on Mondays, it's, uh, it's been a disaster hour with uh, everyone recovering from the weekend and wandering around, uh, uh, wandering in from anywhere from 8.30 to, to 9 o'clock. And uh, the work in the seminar proceeds in a fairly progressive way, so it isn't, uh, it's a question that if you miss something, everyone has to uh, back up and start over again. So let's, let's try and hit, hit for 8 o'clock uh, on Fridays. Uh, we moved it to Fridays to keep the Monday morning blues to a minimum. And uh, I think if we really apply ourselves to getting there and, uh, and working at it, that it'll, everyone will find it rewarding. Thanks, Henry. Uh, Glenn Small will introduce uh, natural structures. Both of these are the introductory to uh, advanced structures, and for people who don't have the uh, background prior to coming in to move directly into the, the other structures class, these are the two requirements prior to the, that, that class. Uh, he'll introduce both natural structures and at the same time talk about the independent studio, uh, which he runs uh, as well. Glenn? Um, natural Structures is a basic structural course, and it uh, starts off with definitions, and it's, uh, I'm an architect, consequently the lingo between architects and engineers gets clouded, and so this is an opportunity to learn the lingo of engineers and talk to them so you can um, design. Um, the things we d deal with are like... Uh, trusses, space frames, shell structures, tension, pneumatics, and eventually get into kinetics. And uh, we're always checking back with nature in terms of how it designs in relationship to how man physically designs and some of these sort of more exotic shapes that normally are taught in the studios. Um, accompanying these, the lectures uh, on each one of these uh, categories the last for 14 weeks, there's a model required of each system from the student. So consequently, that besides the lecturing part, there's the hands-on building of the particular structural principle you're dealing with. Um, normally, students think that uh, there's not a lot of work required in seminars, but in this one, to do it properly, there's a lot of work. So you have to come in with the attitude that you're going to put a lot of work into it and you're going to meet the requirements because there's a large dropout ratio and a lot of people never make it through. Um, now... The other, starting this year, there's going to be an independent studio. And originally in 1972, when we first started the school, the school was based on the idea that school, the students chose what they wanted to work on and at their own speed and the goals and the interaction between the faculty they felt was appropriate for their projects. Well, this, this whole idea was based on the idea of creating strong individuals that uh, were self-motivated. And the resultant of this type of teaching resulted in a great big flop. And uh, therefore, the sci -Arc became organized, and we started organizing classes and making them very structured so students could go through in a more even keel. Well, this is an attempt, this studio, is to bring back some of the principles that were previously thought, sought by having an independent type uh, person and uh, still give them a class to interact with. In other words, it always been available here that if a student wanted to choose a project and work on it on their own, they could. But to get faculty to quit the project and to have interaction with other students was rather difficult because they felt rather left out. Well, this is an attempt to bring a group of students together that have all specific interests in a variety of different areas and that they can choose and work on it and also they can choose the faculty to interact with. They've chosen uh, one permanent faculty of myself, but at the same time they're going to go into the rest of the faculty and get a couple others to crit their projects. So that'll be going. And uh, Terry Rainey is going to speak now. Uh, actually, the students put this all together. I was probably the last leg of the, the culmination of the situation. We've been working on the studio, this independent studio, through the course of the summer uh, prior to school ending last year. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what Glenn just said, but uh, 
he said very succinctly, there's been, there's been a difficulty in the past with the independent study program for students to isolate themselves and get off in the corner and there's not much feedback back and forth or interaction. This is what we're trying to accomplish with this independent studio and that's all at this point. We feel like that with weekly group crits, with scheduled individual crits, with guest speakers, and with field trips, we can reinforce those issues that are important to us as independent students. Okay. The, um, as far as the scheduled crits go, the individual crits, we're going to start scheduling them on Wednesdays for independent students from 5 to 8 p.m. on a sign-up basis. 5 to 8 each Wednesday. And there will be a poster around for those of you interested in that. This is going to be the basis for individual crits from what I understand from Ray. Um, we'll be coordinating that effort for the independent students. The independent studio is based on the premise that interaction and feedback will serve to strengthen the people doing independent study at SIAR. We did, we have as students coordinated, it, coordinated the whole project and organized it. And we're going to rely on people within the studio to keep this ongoing process and working on it to get out any bugs in it because there's about a dozen of us that have worked on it through the summer. Some new life can be pumped into it perhaps in certain areas for feedback. So if you're in, in, in the independent study program at all in any manner, we're going to be meeting in this first seminar space over here this, this afternoon at 1.30. Thanks. Uh, Jonathan Kirsch has a deadline with LA Magazine, so he wants to introduce early. I, I may have missed it, taken him past his deadline already. Uh, he, he's introducing a writing and communication course this year, I think one that architects need badly uh, from most of the papers that we've seen. And uh, Jonathan does it with a great deal of zest. <laughs> so come on. First of all, I have to say it's New West Magazine that I have a deadline for. We don't mention Los Angeles Magazine around the office. As a matter of fact, when I was going to sleep last night, there was a radio commercial for LA Magazine that just spoiled my whole night. I'm Jonathan Kirsch. I'm going to be teaching a writing and uh, communication course here uh, on Monday night, 7 to 9. This is a spin-off of a kind of dog and pony show that I've put together over the last three years as editor of uh, LA Architect, which you may be familiar with as the publication of the Southern California chapter. Uh, basically, it's a seminar focused on the practical communication problems that architects face, uh, probably extends to architectural students as well, and, and we certainly intend to, to make it that way. Uh, I've given the seminar for under the auspices of the Southern California chapter also in some private firms and through UCLA Extension, so it's been pretty well tested. Uh, what we try to do is start with the most basic writing and speaking skills. And I can guarantee you, after spending three years of talking on the phone with architects, it's, it's a very basic problem. Uh, and we, we try to address it from the, from the very first moment of communication. And we go uh, pretty far along in 15 weeks. Uh, we will get into architectural uh, public relations. We'll get into architectural criticism. At least we'll touch on it. Uh, we'll get into description of projects and proposals. Uh, but we will also start in the first few weeks with some very basic writing and speaking skills based on a syllabus that I've prepared. Now, the big question in my mind is whether the course will be a basic writing course or a more advanced course. And, and I hope that I can have it both ways, because it's more interesting for me if we have a, a mixture of, of skill levels when we go in. So if you, uh, it's not bonehead English. Uh, but if you're, if you're really practically illiterate, I, you know, come along. Maybe we'll work something out. On the other hand, if you're a good writer, I hope you'll come too, because it's, it's always stimulating. Uh, we will have some guest speakers. Uh, John Dreyfus and Art Seidenbaum, the architectural writers for the LA Times, will drop by to talk about architectural journalism. Uh, John Pastier, if I can catch him, uh, will come by to talk about architectural criticism. We will have <clears throat> somebody from uh, Dim Jim to come in to talk about 
uh, the corporate image, the architectural image, uh, things like office stationery, preparing proposals, things like that. And we will also get a professional architectural public relations counselor in to talk about those areas. Uh, beyond that, I just I just want to say that what I try to do in my courses uh, for two hours on a Monday night is make them kind of uh, entertaining and fun, and, and that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, we will have very little outside writing assignments. Most of the writing you do will be in class. We will also have a lot of what I call games, uh, I, not meaning to demean it, but we'll have mock negotiating sessions, mock interviews. You'll have an opportunity to get up and read something that you've written or say something that's on your mind. And uh, unless you're prepared to, to open your mouth, you know, that's what, that's what this is all about. The last thing I want to say is that the first time I came to SciArc, I sat in that cubicle up there and listened to Rainer Bannum give a speech. And I was sort of putzing around the desk there, looking at all the models and the T-square and all the, the symbols of architecture. And I noticed a little pocket dictionary. And I, and I was really inspired. I thought, well, here's a, a, a Renaissance architect who also has need of a of a dictionary, and I've used that anecdote in every class I've ever taught. I say, over at SciArc, those guys, uh, those people have dictionaries on their desk. Now, I probably found the only cubicle in SciArc <laughs> that had a dictionary, but uh, I don't know, maybe after my course is over, we'll have a few more dictionaries around. Well, I hope I'll see you on Monday. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan, and thanks, Ralph Mercena. <laughs> Okay, now we'll, f we'll pretty much follow the order from here on out then. Steve Albert, Project and Office Management. Uh, we have uh, some goals in uh, project management, and uh, I'll go through those, and I'll describe to you what the vehicles are uh, for studying and uh, hopefully accomplishing those goals. We want to uh, demonstrate uh, methods of organizing the architect's office uh, for the successful completion of large and small-scale projects. Uh, we want to illustrate the uh, architect's relationship to consultants uh, during all phases of the uh, basic services contract, and we'll find out what this, that term basic services contract means. And uh, uh, as sort of a catch-all, we want to explore uh, the team approach and we want to analyze uh, in depth the uh, dynamics of uh, uh, organizing the architect's office around a team. The vehicle that we'll uh, use for that and that uh, we have been using uh, and we update it periodically is a uh, real contract where uh, each student uh, uh, will be asked to uh, take the contract and uh, uh, develop uh, his or her own uh, office structure around it. That is to um, see that the contract uh, uh, gives you certain limitations and liabilities and uh, sometimes, depending upon uh, what type of contract it is, forces you to organize your efforts in certain ways. So uh, each student will be responsible for uh, developing uh, their own path uh, uh, in terms of uh, budgeting their own uh, man hours to accomplish the project and also to uh, hopefully bring in the, a project that falls within the client's budgets too. Uh, we aren't doing any uh, design work in the seminar. What we're simply doing is, uh, is uh, simulating the process without the actual design effort. Uh, another, uh, well, as I, as I say, the, uh, the overriding uh, influence of this is to show that uh, 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 as a person trying to uh, complete a project in a uh, professional practice setting, uh, you won't be working and you never really do work as an individual. Uh, you have uh, people within your office uh, uh, working with you, uh, perhaps being paid by you. You also have uh, consultants uh, who are being uh, uh, paid by you and there's a, um, uh, a personal goal that you have and that is to uh, get the best work out of yourself uh, if possible and also to get the, the uh, best and the, uh, the uh, best results out of those people working with you and consulting to you. And uh, this is one of the very strong objectives of the course, and we want to see if there are ways to accomplish that uh, and ways that can uh, make you a uh, stronger practitioner. We're meeting uh, Monday mornings at uh, 10 o'clock, and so next Monday will be our first meeting. Uh, uh, also, we're using a text uh, basically as a reference text, and uh, it's called uh, New Techniques in Architectural Practice. It's been out a couple of years now, and uh, it's a a uh, fairly expensive book, but we'll use it as a uh, simply as a resource and uh, uh, 
because there are some interesting parts to it. It's uh, put out by the AIA, and uh, it's on uh, a whole slew of them have been ordered. I have no idea how many people will sign up, so we've ordered 50, and uh, they're over at uh, Hennessy and Ingalls. Okay, thanks. Another uh, new seminar that we've introduced this year is landscape architecture, and uh, Ina Dubinoff will be heading that one. Uh, is Elsa here too, or? Okay, Ina. This course will cover uh, several things, um, including. Uh, this course will cover several things, including uh, basic plant materials. Is it on? Okay. Uh, we'll cover plant materials. You got it. And uh, there'll be a slide material to cover that, and you'll learn to recognize and identify various plant materials, and learn um, how and why to use them in various situations. Uh, in addition, we'll cover. Um, basic design principles, tools, and materials, and ways of creating um, the kinds of outdoor spaces that are required for any particular problem. And um, you'll be required to keep a notebook of this information, the plant material and, des and design principles, uh, which will include sketches and information. And this will be for your future reference and use. Um, at the end, uh, there will be a short design problem. And just how we'll structure that will depend primarily on um, on the size of the class. So we'll see it may be a, um, a specific design problem related to the school, or it may be um, tied into your design problems that you'll be doing in your studios. Uh, in addition, Elsa Fleischman will be coming in to um, give a historical view of landscape architecture uh, through the ages. She'll talk about um, oh, geographical and cultural considerations and ways that different cultures at different times have um, looked at landscape planning. And also, we'll have a landscape architect coming in to talk about um, professional practice of landscape architecture and how the landscape architect and the architect can relate um, in a professional way. And if time permits, uh, we'll plan some field trips, but um, we'll have to see how um, your other classes uh, will relate to that. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who come into SciArc, uh, say, without somewhere between 45 to 60 units of work, uh, there's a series of courses that, in general education uh, that we ask you to take. Uh, one of these is Ascent of Man, which is taught this semester, Civilization, which is taught in the spring, uh, also the Architecture, Planning, and Social Sciences, uh, Economic and, and uh, Political Theory that's taught in the, the following year plus then the, uh, the humanities electives. Most of you do come in with either uh, previous, previous degrees or uh, usually enough units of work to not have to necessarily take these courses. Yet, I think for a lot of you that I've interviewed through the p period of time when you've gone to community colleges and so forth, uh, I think some of you've usually just taken maybe one or two courses in the general education area other than your mathematics and English courses or history. So sometimes these are good for you as well. Uh, Shelley Cappy teaches uh, the Ascent of Man course and also the Evolution of Modern Movement. So I think what, she can probably introduce both of these at the same time. Shelley? The Ascent of Man class is based on the work of Dr. Jacob Bernofsky, whose book and films we use as a basis for the class. Uh, we read not only his books, but uh, extended materials that have been developed to interrelate with the films and the books. We discuss, uh, we evaluate, and uh, the end result is a tremendously broad exposure uh, to the interrelationship of science and cultural development because the ascent of man really traces the accomplishments of man through scientific achievement. We'll meet on Monday mornings at 10 uh, each week uh, for the semester. The evolution of the modern movement is a, an architectural history class that runs for two semesters. We start in 1850 and we come up to current times in architectural uh, design and development. We study uh, the influences 
the cross influences uh, between the continents from America to Europe, uh, from Japan to America, and uh, become familiar with not only uh, the architects uh, who produce the, uh, the work, their philosophies, but also develop a design vocabulary that is useful in your studio work. Uh, the Evolution of the Modern Movement uh, class meets on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock. Another new faculty member this year is Sid Brisker. Uh, I think most of you, if you want to know a little bit more about our, our new faculty, I think most of them are covered in the, the new energies that, that Ellen put out uh, this year. And I think as, as the time goes on, I hope that this energy's paper will evolve and develop into a, a larger and, and uh, probably bigger and more in, totally informative paper. However, I think this, this one is, is a much greater improvement on those that we've done before, and I uh, congratulate Ellen for doing that uh, th and, and taking the lead on it. Sid Brisker uh, teaches two courses this year. One is the mechanical systems course, which we're introducing, and second, uh, the architectural detailing course, which meets three times a week. Uh, Sid, would you like to talk about what you're going to be doing? For those of you who want to really talk, why don't you move to the outside completely if you're, you know, if you're not interested, so that the people up front don't have to listen to the mumbling in the back all the time. Okay, the, the, the first course that I'll be teaching, the seminar on Monday night, which is mechanical systems, and I've written a course outline, if, if you don't mind, I'll read it. In its simplest meaning, a building is a structure enclosing space. Aside from the aesthetics which depend on the shape, form, mass, texture, color, space relationship, and so forth, there are two other considerations which must be met, namely function and comfort. No good? Oh. It's working. I guess I'm not. The course will deal with those mechanical systems in a building which are necessary to satisfy the functions carried on in the use of the building and necessary to provide the desired comfort of the users or the occupants. The course will take a symbolic building and analyze the requirements for mechanical systems for both the function of the building and the comfort of the occupants. Briefly, these fall into the following broad categories. Heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, electrical, both power and lighting, plumbing, sanitary and fire protection, communications, vertical and horizontal transportation, and sound control. Now, since mechanical systems utilize energy sources which originate with fossil fuels, which must be used conservatively, the course will also address itself to energy conservation, particularly as dictated by governmental regulations. The course will also address itself to all of its sources of energy, such as solar energy, wind, power, and water. Now, during the course, we will go through design processes. That is, we'll go through the process that the consultant engineers use in determining the, the equipment that uh, will be used in the building. This is necessary for an architect to understand this process so that when he designs his spaces, he will understand what uh, constraints uh, the uh, building, well, what constraints the building will have as a result of the required uh, mechanical equipment. Uh, however, an architect, while it would be well if he could do the design, if he understands the process, and then he will be able to work better with the consultant. And this will be our objective. The, there will be no textbook, there will be no examination, but a paper will be required uh, in which the student will, uh, as a result of the course, will write a paper on his understanding of the relationship between the architect and the consultant engineer in the design of a building. The other course which I will be conducting will be the seminar on architectural detailing. 
Now, in architectural de <coughs> detailing, I approach this uh, as a language. That is, architectural working drawings or detailing is a written language designed to communicate to a builder all the information he needs to construct a building exactly as the designer has conceived it to be. In other words, it is a communication, a form of communication between a producer of one system to the producer of another system. <clears throat> and like all languages, the language of architectural detailing has evolved over years of usage and is generally universally recognized. And like all languages, it is not an end in itself, but rather a tool for communication. And what we will stress then is the need for uh, proper usage of the language and clarity, understanding. The language of architectural detailing utilizes a combination of graphic illustration, symbols, numbers, and written notes to communicate to the builder the directions for correctly constructing the architect's design. And as with any good communication, the meaning and intent must be clear with no possibility of misunderstanding. The quality of architectural detailing is judged not by its elaborateness or innovativeness of style, but rather by the clear and simple way in which the meaning is conveyed. And if you can compare this to a book, the beauty of the book, the topography, is not the end in itself. The the meaning in the book is the end in itself, and this is what we will stress. The, the day that a building is completed, the working drawings can be thrown away. The building is, is, the, is the object, not the working drawing. It is a tool, and we will treat it as a tool. We will divide the course into two sections, or two parts. The first part, we will take a very simple industrial building. We'll, we will take... Um, a set of preliminary plans that I have for a building with some variations and the class or each student will develop an abbreviated set of working drawings. And then in the second half of the, of the term, we will deal with type five wood construction detailing. We'll also deal with the building codes. We will deal with site that is with topography, with site surveys, and all the elements that are necessary for proper detailing. I don't know if it was made clear to you uh, on, on this last class, but the Architecture 3 people will be taking it this fall only, and the, and the Graduate 2 people will be taking it in the spring, because we would have you know, too great an overload otherwise. Also, those of you who have had uh, a fair amount of uh, working drawing experience and detailing experience prior to coming to SciArc uh, don't have to take this class again. What you will do is present the kind of work you have done to Sid, and uh, he'll de determine whether you take the class or not. So many of you, I know when you've been um, interviewed here by either uh, Bill or me, uh, have been told that you'll be given credit for that class. Many of you from the junior colleges have done uh, fairly good work already in this area, and it's probably not necessary for you to do this. Uh, we're also, Sid is also going to be working on an intern program that we're going to try to uh, institute in the spring, uh, whereby those of you who are some of the better people in the class will have an opportunity to uh, work with some of the offices around the city. So uh, we're trying to do this as an experimental program for the state and for the national AIA who are trying to look at methods of working intern programs uh, nationally. Cherry, would you like to introduce uh, architecture planning and the social sciences? As a course title indicates, it covers pretty much the whole ground or tries to of human development. And uh, the course is based on two important premises. One, the first one being that some knowledge of the human condition um, is useful to architects and designers in developing buildings which are for the use of people. The second one is that you've heard the word team mentioned before. You're going to hear it a lot around here. Um, as the kinds of projects that we're involved in become more and more complex, we find ourselves working as member of teams. And in fact, the teams, I think, are beginning to develop into more interdisciplinary kinds of people with di diverse skills. What we're trying to do in the seminar is give you, one, an exposure to the, the disciplines of human development, which includes 
areas which are traditionally called physiology, psychology, sociology, anthropology, things like this. And to begin to develop an understanding of what some of these fields have to offer to you as a designer in terms of insights into the human condition and how that might influence the uh, design work that you'll be doing. The course was developed last year as a kind of experiment in looking at how we could bring an understanding of some of these social science areas into the program in a way that would be meaningful to architects and architecture students. And we developed a kind of informal working relationship with the Wright Institute here in Los Angeles, which is a psychoanalytic institute. And there are a couple of people from their faculty who will be coming into the program who will be teaching um, with me in the seminar. The seminar will include a physiologist who's an MD, a psychologist um, who is involved in areas of developmental psychology and cognitive intellectual development, and a uh, sociologist involved in dynamics of groups, social relations, and also somebody who has main interest and background in cultural influence on people and how that influences ways in which we uh, relate to space and the environment. The uh, program will be broken down into four phases which correspond basically with what could be loosely described as, as sort of distinct stages in human development, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. And rather than studying psychology, sociology, anthropology, or any of the disciplines specifically, what we're going to try and do is focus on the human being and look at the human being as they evolve through these various stages from the viewpoint of the different disciplines which have been developed. Um, so the, it will be taught as a team. The meetings will be Monday evenings from uh, 7 to 9 o'clock. Um, some of you who may have some background already in some of the disciplines may be interested in coming to the first meeting, which will basically be a kind of more thorough introduction as to the kinds of materials we're going to be covering and how the course is going to be run and what kinds of things we'll be involved with doing. Right, is Chad Reader here? Or no? Okay, I, I didn't think I had seen him. Chad teaches the lighting and acoustics class, and I guess that's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, this year, we, he is being joined by a, an acoustician uh, to teach, I think, several sessions of uh, the class, uh, a person who's worked with one of the larger acoustical firms in the country. Uh, and has been at it for about 25 years, so there will be a, an added dimension, I think, to that particular class this year. Um, then I'd like to move on then to another new seminar. Uh, we categorize it here as music history. I'm not sure if it's only, it's not really going to be only music history. Ken Klaus, who Shelley and I have known for, I guess, about 15 years, uh, is going to teach a class this year uh, which really relates I think how music with the other arts and particularly with architecture and I think uh, for many of you who have not had the inner, say, the inner discipline uh, relationship between the arts, uh, this would probably be a very excellent class and, and particularly for some of you who are in the fourth or fifth year uh, uh, design studios and who have completed most of your seminars, I'm sure this would be one that would uh, add to your growth, knowledge, and uh, f f total fulfillment as a human being. So Ken, would you like to introduce it? The, um, <clears throat> the music uh, or well, the uh, European history is particularly rich in influence and uh, variety of influence and articulation. The musical counterpart of that is extremely rich. I'm, I'm a sort of an amateur historian, primarily a musician. I uh, want to give cross-references, particularly to the architectural uh, Parallels and also non-parallels. There will be many times when it might be contradictory. Um, the 
What this course will not be is a uh, music appreciation. I uh, disdain to teach anything like that. I have uh, divided the uh, music history into 15 sort of stylistic areas. That's a lot of territory to cover in 13 weeks, really. We'll do our best. The courses, uh, the discussions will cover about 50% listening time. That in itself is an art that a lot of us have not learned. Uh, music to be listened to is a, uh, is a creation of the Western world. Uh, these times we're kind of getting away from it. We're using it for purposes again so that uh, it takes an intellectual involvement as well. Now, I won't get anything technical that is not apt to your purposes. I certainly uh, don't expect to bore you with things like that. Um, uh, as I say, 50% of it, about half, will be actual listening. A quarter of the time will be my talking. I enjoy doing that very much. And about a quarter of the time, uh, in actual discussion, I would like to have you uh, vouchsafe your opinions. I don't know that there's anything else on that. Thank you. Tom Anderson will introduce both of the advanced structures course, one and two. Bud Brown is still overseas and I guess coming in Friday, so. Okay, uh, it's kind of unfortunate to be teaching the most grueling class at SciArc, but uh, between Bud and I, we're going to be teaching the structures courses, and uh, my intent is to give all of you people a, sort of an overview of how the engineer and the architect work together. And it seems to me that uh, we're not trying to make you engineers, little engineers that run around and whip out your calculator all the time. But what we're trying to do is give you enough material and basis so that you can coherently do something with your projects. And uh, I think a lot of that is lacking in what I hear people talking about their projects and, and in a lot of architecture that I see. So it should be uh, an interesting two semesters. I'm trying a, a different manual this uh, semester, which will be based on the kinds of things that you need to know in order to pass a professional exam, which is one slight benefit of uh, taking the class. And uh, the other slight benefit is I think the book is more comprehensive than a lot of the other materials that we've been using before. So for those of you who are taking Structures 2, which is Bud's class, you already know what it's going to be about. Structures 1, which I'm teaching on Friday, starts out with talking about how buildings react under loads, what kind of loads that they are expected to take, and then going into the theory of why certain materials hold up and can maintain these loads under these various conditions. And finally, in the first semester, we'll be talking a little bit about steel design. But uh, I think the basis of the first semester is more theory. The basis of the second semester is more practicality. Um, as far as the students go, I think the theory is the most important part. I think that the practicality is important from knowing how things go together physically, but all the calculated and the complicated parts of that you wouldn't probably be coming in contact with anyway. The theory, though, is, is vital for being able to come up with something that's, that's a practical approach to what you're doing. I think that we'll have a number of field trips and slides and various other supportive material to try and make it a little, le little less painful. Um, there is going to be a tremendous amount of homework. And I know that Bud, I'm sure that Bud, and for sure for myself, will be having a couple of quizzes and a few problems that will be mandatory in order to pass the class. And I found that the quizzes were a good indication for me what you guys were learning, what you people were learning or not learning. The mandatory problems worked very effectively in having people go through a complete set of calculations for something. So with that, I know you're all going to drop out, but we'll see you anyway. I guess gradually testing is 
<laughs> moving into Cyarch. Uh, it's some, something we have heard for many years, but I guess in, in many cases it's the only way that, that an instructor has a sense of whether they're getting their material across. We used to try to do it by papers, and in most classes you can do that. In structures it's kind of difficult. Uh, the homework says something about what you do in terms of participation, but I guess the other is necessary to some degree. <coughs> Rex Lotary is also joining our staff this year and uh, will be teaching a very comprehensive course in urban design. And I'd like to recommend to those of you who have taken my class in urban design or Eric's in previous times that it wouldn't hurt you to do it once again because I think Rex will be covering it in a uh, probably a more thorough way than we have. You'll be hitting some of the same points, but probably bringing it around uh, in, a, in a more total way. So, uh, Rex, would you like to talk about what you're going to be doing further? In a sense, the title of the course, Urban Design and Planning, is a little bit of a misnomer. What I will be attempting to do is take a very comprehensive look at the entire planning process, which of course will include urban design and the planning, but it will include the political process too. And we'll show you how the politics, the federal, the local, the regional function is very much a part of that total planning process. We'll look at land settlement patterns both in this country, in California, particularly Los Angeles, uh, we'll look at the redevelopment process, public housing, the urban crisis, the entire land planning process, again at a federal, regional, and local level. In addition to that, we will look at the new town movement, the European new, new town movement, uh, the American development in the new town process, and alternatives to the new town movement. In addition to that, we'll be looking at environmental law, resource management, uh, and finally, we'll be looking at proposed processes, political, governmental planning processes for the future. Thank you. Uh, Ross Sutherland wasn't able to be with us. I guess the mic <laughs> volume changes as, as, as the after morning goes on. Uh, and I think for those of you uh, who were here last year, I think most of you saw the product of Ross's class, and I think it was met with a great deal of enthusiasm what went on in that evening. Uh, so again, we've asked him to teach it this semester, and he'll probably be taught uh, probably each semester because there's a great deal of interest uh, among the student body in, in uh, becoming more proficient with the pencil. Uh, the class will, I, I don't know whether, I know last year there were about 30, 35 students in it, uh, and most of those stayed on. I, I don't know whether Ross will limit the class or allow it to grow as large as those who want to take it uh, want it to be. Uh, however, again, there's a lot of drawing required, and uh, it takes uh, a fair amount of work to keep up with the class, I think. So uh, that meets at 7 to 9 on Thursday, and uh, Ross will be here uh, tomorrow night, I guess, to meet with those of you who uh, are interested. I guess that really takes us down then to uh, our last seminar introduction. That would be Eric Moss's uh, architectural theory. Eric? He was here earlier. Did he leave? Is Eric here? Or? Yeah, I, I did. I left one out. I'm sorry. And that wasn't. Go ahead. This is the seminar or the studio? Seminar. <laughs> the seminar is a little bit like the Twilight of the Idols class. Different title. Uh, different uh, personalities. Uh, similar format, except uh, the weekly paper uh, is... Uh, not required, but rather than the people who some uh, who you don't know, some of the Russians, my labor.
Sven uh, Lizitsky and people like that. Uh, and a little bit at one project which I got interested in just because of some legal problems that we happen to have, which is this thing in uh, Copley Square in Boston, which involves the, uh, well, the library, uh, McKim, Mead, and White, uh, the Trinity Church by Richardson, and this uh, John Hancock building done by I.M. Pay's office. So it's a kind of a smattering of a number of things. It's not uh, linear in its structure, just uh, a number of things that I thought would be of some interest to you, subjects and uh, that are also of some interest to me. That's it. I inadvertently left out one of our seminars, one of the more popular ones around here, because he was sandwiched between two that had already been given. Uh, Jack uh, Park teaches low impact technology, and this semester it'll be given, I think, just as the first semester class, but I think in the spring we'll probably uh, expand that into a uh, couple of other seminars. So Jack, do you want to introduce him? It's got to be a measure of success of a low impact technology class that it had such a low impact tech on the brass here that they overlooked us when they're introducing the courses. Uh, I had a flash come into school this morning that you know that for $3,000 you can buy yourself a ride in the space shuttle? And, and that, uh, for $500 today, you can get what they call a gateway special. That's, that's, that's a deposit. And of course, the balance has to be paid before you fly. But it, it gets you, if you weigh less than 200 pounds, and you can fit in five cubic feet, which I think you can, um, they'll, they'll, they will bolt you to space available in the, in the cargo bay in that thing and take you for a ride out there. Now, maybe that sounds a little off the wall because I'm supposed to introduce a low impact technology course, but I'm, I think I should warn you that it, it, in the long run, it has profound effects on how you will design, how you will think in an architectural field. The spin-offs that will filter down uh, life support systems, recycling of wastewater, shower water, et cetera, when they go into outer space and they build these space stations, for whatever reason they build them, be it uh, uh, warfare or civilization advancement or whatever, they must work with life support systems and they must be of the lowest possible impact technologies usable because the cargo costs such a fortune to send into outer space to do the job. So at any rate, this is a growing field and, and I think the space shuttle thing was appropriate to introduce. And, and you can do it. I mean, there's a lot of people around who are buying seats for their kids just, you know, because that's something to do. Uh, I, there, one fellow in, in Atlanta, Georgia, bought five seats. He only has three kids, so he gave two of them to the local university. Uh, it's tempting for, for my company, Helion, to buy one and give it to SciArc and see which one of you gets to go. Uh, um, in, in low imp well, which, who, let's see the hands. Who would go? Hmm? <laughs> all right, all of you issues people can deal with that one, all right? Uh, in low impact technologies, we deal uh, on a superficial level with heat loss calculations from a dwelling, and then we turn that dwelling that's losing heat into a solar powered dwelling that gains heat and balances itself. That's a superficial level. What we're really dealing with is um, the design approach that you need to get into the use of low impact technology, most specifically solar energy for heating and cooling of, of architectural forms that you will create in other studios and other seminars. And in our studio, in our seminar, you are asked to, to do certain kinds of calculations and they're very simple, they're almost arithmetic. So we would ask that you purchase a copy of Other Homes and Garbage, which is published by Sierra Club. If you can get by that title, you can get by this course. And you can get that at Hennessy and Ingalls. And it's also a good shot if you'll run over to Savon's today. For $4.97, they've got a pocket calculator. And it's handy to, to do all the calculations. Um, you know, you probably, 
your parents probably paid over $1,000 to your local school board to teach you the skills that's in a $4 calculator. So uh, we're, it's a growing and changing world. You really have to understand that. And low impact technologies, uh, is it still required, Ray? Hello? Yeah, okay, it's required, so you don't have to listen to me. You have to be there. But some of you who, you don't, if you don't have to be there, it's, you'll find that it's worth being there anyhow. If nothing else, a bigger class makes it an awful lot more fun. Okay, and in line with low-impact technology, I guess most of you have been suffering through the BTU increase that's been going on today because of all the bodies. I guess if we had all of you here in, in the cold weather, that would solve one of our problems. And if we got rid of you, I guess in the hot weather, we would, we would do better. But uh, this year, we're, we're, we are going to run a vertical studio um, that does deal with our building once again. This building doesn't really work well from a standpoint of heat gain and heat loss. It, it has no insulation. It, it has uh, problems that a lot of you have lived with over many years. So the second year studio, the fourth year studio, the independent studio are going to spend several weeks analyzing the building and hopefully by about the fourth or fifth week there will be an all school meeting discussing some of the uh, problems and some of the issues and some of the approaches to solving uh, what our problems are and uh, probably a week or so after that we hope to implement some of these so at that time we would want the whole student body to be involved in the implementation process about the same time as that goes on I'm, I hope that some of the structures like our rhombics that we had originally hoped to move out to the site, to a natural site, when we first started SciArc five years ago. Uh, we'll open up a new space. Uh, we have the penthouse space that's never been generated into anything uh, tremendously usable. And so I think there's a lot of things still to be done within our structure here, as well as what's going to start to happen out on the new site. And so, as I said earlier, we look forward to an exciting year and, and uh, as we move through this fall and spring and next summer and through the years ahead. Uh, before, I don't know how we ever end up on time, but we do. It's not 10.30, which is what I expected to be, but I, you know, it's, it's strange to end there. Uh, we will break for about a half hour now and give you a chance to disperse, walk around. Uh, those of you who have questions, maybe before we break, I'll ask if there are any questions that might be of a general nature that would be beneficial to everybody. Those of you who have specific questions of, of Bill, uh, Bill, you're going to go up to the library? Is that what you're going to do? Okay. Uh, okay, and see how many students there are. Okay, and those of you who have specific questions, hang in here for a little bit, and then we'll see how we'll break that down. At 11 o'clock, oh, wait a minute, I left out the very important part of the whole program here. I knew I would do that. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, as most of you know, or I think a lot of you know anyway, Julie uh, is no longer with us. Doug got a job back east in New Haven uh, and uh, uh, with Roe Stinkaloo, and they left about two weeks ago. Uh, so this year we have a new, new staff. Sherry is also going back to do her master's work at UCLA in, in her uh, study area. So we have two new uh, people who will be taking over their positions. In the library, uh, we have Ann Landon. Uh, Ann, do you want to come forward? No? Ann, Ann's bashful, I guess. <laughs> you you got to get over that. Uh, and and uh, taking over the admissions uh, position will be uh, Beth Farnsworth. We looked uh, long to find a uh, somebody with a last name that had some architectural <laughs> uh, connotation to it. Uh, how, about, how about Beth? Uh, come on, Ann. This, this is Beth Farnsworth. Ann, come on so everybody knows who you are. Uh, maybe that's why you're a librarian, you're a quiet type, right? And this is Ann Landon. And Sherry, would you like to make an announcement how we're going to work this thing after we do break? And, and then uh, we'll go to Arlene, who will also make an announcement. So then we'll be there. 
Okay, um, just a couple of quick announcements. We have a student insurance policy and the brochure is in the back on the model, so you can all pick those up. Also, all the new students will have mailboxes as soon as we have a chance to revise the whole system. So start checking those in about a week. Um, cube space right now is sort of limited. So I'd say check that in a week as well, okay? For procedural matters, um, if you've paid up in full, the best thing to do is turn your enrollment sheets in directly to Ann, Beth, or I. And there's a list of the studio placement in the back. And if you don't jive with that, see me. Um, new students will either meet here or up in the library. Bill will meet down here. And if you have questions about seminars and that kind of thing, new students, see Bill. If you're old students and you have a couple of questions, I can probably help you with those. Um, if you haven't paid in full at this point and either want to pay today or sign a promissory note, you should see Arlene before turning in your enrollment sheet and she will then initial it and then we'll take them. Does anyone have a question? Okay. Okay, we'll all be back at the desk. And um, that's about it. Check, check the list that's posted by the bulletin board for your studio placement, and that'll make things much simpler when you go to turn in your sheets. OK, my name's Arlene, and I just wanted to give you a few notes as far as payments. Anyone who has not paid at least half of their tuition will not be allowed to enroll. So we expect at least a payment of $440 from everybody today. Uh, let's see. If you have paid, then you can go see Sherry. If not, you must see me first, and I can arrange a promissory note with you. However, the promissory notes are much more complete this year, and I ask that you take a promissory note and fill out the promissory note in full before coming back to see me. The only thing that you should leave blank are the actual amounts on the promissory notes. Um, let's see. There's a late fee of $15 that is charged on the 15th of each month that you owe a balance. Therefore, we can keep you know, adding the $15 if you hesitate in paying the balance in full. If we should have a return check from anybody, there's a $3 charge to you. Foreign students who require the I-20s, there's an additional $50 foreign student fee. And I'd like to let you know now about the progress we've been making as far as the federal loans, because I know you've all been anxiously awaiting that. Um, the last word from Washington is that we are approved for federal loans and our number is on the way to us. However, that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to apply for loans immediately. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that has to be completed before we can finalize your papers and your applications. I understand also that the BEOG program, which a lot of you have been waiting for, which are grants, we have to make additional application for, which will take additional time. So we will be eligible for the loans before the grants. Now, I've contacted two local banks, Bank of America and Wells Fargo Bank. Both of them more or less cut off the applications that they're accepting as of September 8th, which is tomorrow, and there's no way that we can have any information for you by tomorrow. So anyone who is interested in obtaining a federal loan should contact their own bank and find out their own bank's individual requirements. If any of you have received a previous federal loan from another college or another bank, you're going to have to go bank back to the same bank because banks won't give you a loan once you've received a loan from another bank as a student loan. Also, if you, the, most of the banks, from what I've found out, won't give you a loan unless you are a second year student and unless you have been a resident of California for a year. The banks may differ from bank to bank, but that seems to be the general policy. Any of you who are students from New York or who are under, I believe it's 21, and have parents residing in New York are eligible for federal loans, I believe up to $2,500, where the California loans, from what I understand, are only available up to $1,500 per year. Are there any questions from anybody? Okay, thank you. I just forgot to mention, we would like all of your enrollment sheets today 
And if you decide to change your mind about classes, there's going to be a sheet up in the library for you to add or drop classes so that each time you change your mind, Anne won't have to go through all the books and change the class list at that point. So please turn in your enrollment sheets, even though you're unsure of some of the classes, and then go up to the library and report changes as you decide to. Also, please keep us posted of changes in address and phone number so that we can get all the mailings out to you. Thanks. Really organized now. Uh, before we, we break, I want to I want to state where the seminars will take place so that when you come back at eleven o'clock, you'll know where to where to go. Uh, these are just for the Wednesday morning seminars now, so you'll have a chance to meet with the, the people who, who presented. Uh, Ken Klaus will meet with his group uh, back in the Rhombic area, so that'll be that'll be one spot. Uh, advanced Structures with Tom will meet in this main space. Uh, Jack Park will meet with the low impact technology people in the penthouse. That's third floor up. Um, Evolution of the Modern Movement will meet at the west end of the seminar space downstairs. Uh, Rex Lodi's Urban Design Studio class seminar will meet at the, at the, the eastern end of the seminar space. And Sid Brisker will meet with the architectural detailing class, which meets every day on Wednesday, up in the um, mezzanine upstairs. Okay. Later, when we meet for studios, let me just give you where those meeting places will take place, so that you have, when you come back at 1:30 this afternoon for that, you'll know where to be. Um, Architecture One will meet in the penthouse. Architecture 2 will meet, the Glassman and, and Berkby will meet at the west end of the seminar space downstairs. Simonian will meet at the eastern side of the downstairs seminar space. Arc 3 will meet on the mezzanine right up here. Um, Arc 4 will be down in this space here, in the main space. Um, Arc 5 is the inflatable down back there. Uh, We'll meet back in that seminar space in the in the uh, cubics back there, uh, and the graduates uh, will both meet in the second floor seminar or studio spaces, which are right above the, this group. They're at the second floor on the other side. Um, the s community design studio will meet back in this room uh, at the western end of the the uh, mezzanine, and. Uh, I think that takes care of everybody, doesn't it? Any, any studio? And the independents, where, where do you want them to meet, Glenn? Also upstairs in the penthouse? Should we do that? Yeah. Do you want to take the, the penthouse, too? And then, OK, all the independents will be upstairs in the penthouse as, as well. Yeah. Urban design seminar will be at the eastern end of the downstairs seminar room. That'll be a you know in a half hour. So are there any questions anybody has of a general nature? Okay, why don't we just break then? Yeah, just a minute. stay here if you have questions about what seminars you're gonna be in. Take the fifth year studio, that would be the best. Oh, yeah. That would be the best for you. Yeah. 